Welcome to the eighth video in the series on Cebus Porcelain. Of the many studios producing sculptures depicting people in the 20th century, there were none in the United States or Europe that came close to matching the spectacular works created by the artists of Cebus. The many porcelain firms, including Dresden, Kaiser, Beam, and Connoisseur, failed to even eclipse the beauty and magnificence of Cebus Studios Portraits in Porcelain Collection. The splendor of these majestic sculptures was awe-inspiring to collectors and placed Cebus at the pinnacle of opulence in the porcelain arts. These sculptures greatly contributed to establishing Cebus' reputation as the greatest porcelain art studio to ever exist. It was during the 1960s, with Laszlo Espanky as the chief designer, that Cebus began releasing the stunning sculptures that defied the traditional interpretations of human features in porcelain or china. For the first time, an American firm was releasing portraits made of porcelain with details so expressive collectors were captivated with the reality of the subjects created. From a furrowed brow to veins in a hand with detailed fingers, Cebus produced human features that were considered more realistic than anything ever produced in bronze or marble. The softness of the matte porcelain finishes combined with the perfect selection of color created works only expected from an old world master's use of oil on canvas. There were many artists who contributed their talents to bringing human subjects to life in porcelain for the Cebus studio, but it should be noted that not a single sculpture released in the Portraits in Porcelain collection was created by Boleslaw or Marja Sebus. With the passing of the studio to Marilyn Charlton upon the deaths of Boleslaw and Marja, it was Marilyn's wisdom and foresight that would see the benefit in creating and naming categories for sculptural content, grouping them into collections. With semi-annual release cycles for new introductions, marketing material needed to deliver an organized presentation. At first, Sculptures were listed alphabetically in two groups, limited editions and non-limited editions. Later, the non-limited editions would be referred to as open editions. Design numbers for people started with the number four. As new sculptures were designed, whether a child or an adult, the next number in the 400 series was issued. The earliest attempt to categorize sculptures is found in the studio's publication Cebus in Retrospect from 1970. The kiddos were called storybook children and the adults were titled as personages. A name which today may sound a little awkward, the word personage was often used to express significance, importance, or elevated status. Of similar note, it can refer to a character in a play or other work. Since the first several sculptures released in this group were Juliet, Hamlet, and Ophelia, the title was appropriate. The 1971 price list is the first publication by the studio where the official use of collection names is observed. Again, here they are referred to as personages. The next reference we find to items in this category is the 1972 catalog where a partial list of older sculptures lists the group as figures. However, again on the 1973 price list, they are listed as personages it was in 1974, with the issuance of the Spring Price List, the title was changed to Portraits in Porcelain, the final collection name that would be used until the studio ceased operations in the early 2000s. An interesting fact about the Cebus concept of Portraits in Porcelain is that only four actual sculptures literally portray the individuals for which they are titled. George Washington, the first President of the United States of America, Catherine Hepburn, an American actress and winner of four Academy Awards, and Pope John Paul II, the most popular and beloved leader of the Roman Catholic Church in modern times, were all honored by Cebus having their portraits made in porcelain. While both Hepburn and John Paul were alive when their sculptures were created, actual portraits in oil painted of the president in the 1700s were used for reference to accurately interpret his likeness. All other sculptures in the collection are based on the creating artist's interpretation. An oddity of these four portraits is that of these four sculptures, only the Hepburn piece was ever placed in the portraits in porcelain collection. 
both of the Washington items were placed in the commemorative collection and John Paul was assigned to the biblical collection. Over the years, many sculptures were released in the Portraits in Porcelain collection. As the name of the collection had changed, so would the pieces assigned to the collection change. Sculptures were moved in and out of this category as the Cebus line of products grew and became better defined. Items initially assigned here were later reassigned to the commemorative and biblical collections. For the 1973 price list, the studio made the decision to begin including retired sculptures, some having been completed as far back as the early 1960s. Strangely enough, with this decision, there were three new listings in the personages category that had been sold as open editions. They were not numbered pieces. These three were the first to be recategorized into the personages collection. Up to this point, items had been moved out of the collection into new groups, but this was the first time existing pieces would be added to the group. This change also broke with the previous practice of only listing limited edition pieces in this category. All three were young adults introduced during the first half of the 1960s and previously categorized in the storybook children's group. Dawn, Ballerina on Cue, and Robin Hood were clearly not children. Because of this, they were obviously reassigned to the personages collection as they did not fit with the storybook children theme. But this assignment would only last a few years. On the price lists, they would remain listed as portraits in porcelain through the spring of 1977. The 1977 fall price list had them removed entirely. The 1978 price list discontinued the practice of listing completed editions. In 1978, the studio released its first catalog in almost five years. It contained pictures of many of the older pieces and our three young friends had been reassigned to the Children to Cherish collection, in spite of the fact they all look older than 18. The first sculpture ever assigned to this group was design number 411, the 1963 Espanky rendition of Moses, the Great Lawgiver, later reassigned to the biblical collection with a height of 20 inches, this was one of the tallest pieces a studio would ever create. As a limited edition of 750, Moses' retail price at introduction was $250. This piece has no known design variations. The second sculpture, design number 442, is another Espanky creation released in 1965 named Juliet. She is 12 inches tall an addition of 800 and was introduced with a $175 starting price. Juliet has no known design variations, but has one known color variation. She is found with either dark green or dark pink hair ribbons. The dark green is found most frequently. It is not known how many of the pink ribbon versions were made, but they do turn up periodically. The third sculpture, Beatrice, Another Espanky design, number 445, was also released in 1965 as a limited edition of 700. She is 12 inches tall and issued with a price of $225. Beatrice is known to have both design and color variations. She is found with her dress colors ranging from darker green to almost white. Some minor variations have been noted in the flowers in her hair and at least one version has been found with lace added to both shoulders on her dress. This piece has been for sale at 1980s pricing at an antique mall for many years. As noted from the price tag seen in the picture, she won't be going anywhere anytime soon. The seller is non-negotiable on the price, so for now, the antique mall patrons will continue enjoying her for the foreseeable future. This all-white piece was sold at auction and is nothing more than an unfinished item without a wood base. It managed to find its way out of the studio as shown. The auction listing stated it was marked but not signed. Cebus did not offer this sculpture for sale in white. If it were hand-signed with the eighth Cebus signature and had an addition number and was mounted to a wood base like all others issued by the studio, 
we could then assume that it might have been a special order, as Cebus did accommodate such customer requests. This piece is not rare, it's just not finished. The fourth to be released in the collection is another Espanky design, Hamlet, number 446. As the final sculpture to be released in the collection in 1965, he measures 12 inches tall and was issued with a price of $350 as a limited edition of 500. While there were two color variations produced for sale, there are no known design variations. The earliest releases were of a blonde Hamlet wearing a tunic that was white, blue, and pink with a darker blue cape and pink sash. Few of these were produced. The standard colors found show Hamlet with gray hair wearing a gray tunic, purple sash, and white cape. The photographs that appear in all Cebus catalogs are in black and white but would indicate Hamlet was blonde wearing a very dark tunic with a dark cape and light sash. The prototype sculptures created initially were often different colors. These sculptures were the ones used for marketing material photo shoots. In cases such as Hamlet, the studio decided to make changes to the standard colors after the pictures were taken but before the piece went into production. A fourth color variation was seen in the recent liquidation of the studio's archives and backstock. This Hamlet also had gray hair, a much darker purple sash, and blue cape and darker tunic. The fifth entry into the collection would later be moved to the commemorative collection. Columbia, design number 447, a declared limited edition of 200, was introduced in 1967 with the hefty price of $1,000. Created by a Spanky and measuring 15 inches tall on a wood base, she was the first sculpture Cebus offered to commemorate the Bicentennial of the United States. Her limited edition numbers began with 1776 and ended with 1976 for a total of 201 actual copies. The marketing department obviously didn't catch their math error in this instance. The idea of creating 200 copies for our nation's 200th birthday sounded great, but in issuing one copy for each year starting with 1776 and ending with 1976, they created 201 sculptures, an error they decided to ignore if they ever discovered it. Each piece was assigned an event that happened during the year corresponding to each sculpture's limited edition number. The piece was so popular it sold out and was completed in two years with the edition status listed as complete on the 1968 price list. There are no known design or color variations for this piece. The number on the Columbia in my collection is 1825 commemorating the Erie Canal's completion. The sixth sculpture, the third in the series of busts as Spanky designed, was Guinevere, number 448. Also released in 1967, she measures 12 inches tall and was an addition restricted to 800 with an issue price of $250. While some very minor color variations have been noted, there have been no design variations found to date. The folk singer, number 449, issued in 1967, was the seventh entry into the collection. A Spanky's creation here conveys a form so realistic one can nearly hear him sing. He is 13 inches in height and had an issue price of $300. The declared edition was 500, but due to lagging sales, the edition was closed in 1974 with 283 copies produced. He was issued with an accompanying wood base either in all mahogany or with the top covered in gold or green velvet. While no design variations have been found so far, two color variations are known to exist. The differences between the two variations are found in the colors of the guitar, his hair color, sandals, and most notably, his pants. 1968 saw the eighth and last Spanky entry into this collection with the introduction of Scarlet. The studio had held back on releasing Spanky's creations after his departure in 1965. His prolific creativity 
had given Cebus a cache of material to release in the following years after his separation with the studio. Scarlet, number 459, would be his final contribution. She was 13 inches tall with an edition limit of 500 and an issue price of $450. No design variations have been found to date, but minor color variations are noted in the rose corsage on the front of her dress. The ninth addition to the collection would be Ophelia, number 460, released in 1969. Likely created by Marilyn Charlton, Ophelia was 13 inches tall and an addition of 800 copies. She was offered at the introductory price of $650. Minor variations have been found in the roses she holds in her right hand. An interesting note is the prototype used for marketing photographs that shows a variation in the type of lace used on her sleeves. The prototype shows a folded cuff at the top and serrated edges on the bottom. The production piece would not have this layered look, but rather would utilize the standard lace the studio had used on most sculptures. No examples with this type of lace sleeve have been found to date, nor have any other design variations been seen. Some minor color variations have been observed on the flowers she holds, but those are minimal. The next release in the collection would be in the new decade. 1971 saw the 10th introduction with Eleanor of Aquitaine, number 461. Using the Academy Award winning actress Catherine Hepburn as the model for the sculpture, her image was captured based on her role in the 1968 film The Lion in Winter. Hepburn took home an Oscar for Best Actress, and Cebus produced 750 copies of Eleanor with a starting price of $875. Eleanor is 13 and one half inches tall. One color variation of Eleanor with blonde hair and additional color on the gilded book is known to exist. This was probably a unique item as others have not been seen. A more common design variation is found with a gold ring on her index finger of the hand raised above the book she holds. This variation is not rare, but fewer copies of it were made than the standard issue. Numerous copies of the two ring version have sold online in the last 10 years. The only set released in the Portraits in Porcelain collection came with the 12th introduction debuting in 1973. A pair of ballet sculptures with matching numbers was restricted to 500 copies. The enamored Prince Florimond and the enchanted Princess Aurora were each 11 and 1 half inches tall. Florimond, number 469, had a retail price of $975, while Aurora, number 470, was even pricier at $1,125. While priced separately, the two were intended for sale as a matched set. The pair was designed by freelance artist Harry Berger, who also designed the Cebus Presidential chess set. Due to lagging sales, the edition size was drastically reduced to 200. An oddity to note is that sets have been found with numbers above the stated limit. Pictured is a set number 207. The studio never offered an explanation for how numbers were issued beyond the stated limit size, and at this late date, we can only speculate as to why this anomaly occurred. The proof would suggest at least 207 copies or more were actually produced. No known design or color variations have been found to date. In 1973, Cebus offered the 13th introduction with the release of Portia number 472. She measured 13 and one half inches tall and had an introductory price of $825 with a declared edition of 750 copies. Porsche's entire edition sold out quickly and was completed in just three years. The lace collar around her neck was no challenge for the artists at Cebus to create, nor were the six ringlets of hair three on each side of her face. But for some reason, this piece has a higher rate of damage than most pieces. A good number of the Porsches sold in recent years online and at auction are pictured with broken lace or missing ringlets of hair. This Porsche has had a horrible restoration performed on the lace around her neck. The expression on her face is sadly enough fitting for the condition she's in now. 
The next piece shows a Portia with a chunk of lace missing just to the left of her chin. If purchasing this piece, be sure you know what to look for and closely examine any sculpture against good pictures of a mint copy. Once a mint condition item is acquired, only handle it by the lower part of the sculpture. Picking her up by the head or around the neck will ensure that damage occurs. There are no design variations known to exist for Portia, and to date, no color variations have been found. The Portraits in Porcelain collection also saw an interesting release in the fall of 1973 with the introduction of Eskimo Mother. As the 14th introduction, her design number was 708, a departure from the 400 series. She is 10 and a half inches tall and was released as an addition of 350 with an issue price of $1,875. She was moved to a new collection for the fall of 1975 titled North American. In the fall of 1977, she moved to yet another new collection, Americana Commemorative. Then, if you can believe it or not, on the spring 1978 price list, gone were the previous two collections an Eskimo mother had been placed back in the Portraits in Porcelain collection. Here, she remained until the 1981 price list when she was assigned to the North American Indians collection and her edition size was reduced to 200. Ironically, the piece in my collection is number 201. While most would assume she should have been placed in the American Indian collection all along, that is actually incorrect. The Eskimo people, who prefer to be referred to as Inuit, are racially distinct from the Native American peoples. Rightfully, she should be thought of as a portrait in porcelain since this is where she was first introduced. There are no known design or color variations for Eskimo Mother. The 15th edition to the collection came in 1974 as design number 480. Queen Esther was 13 and one half inches tall, was issued as a limited edition of 750, and had a starting price of $925. This depiction of the biblical character from the Old Testament book of Esther begs the question why she was not placed in the biblical collection. She was never moved between collections. Upon her release, she was shown in the 1974 brochure with blonde hair and blue eyes. It's likely the prototype used for the initial marketing material photo shoot was the only copy produced with those colors as no copies have ever been found to date that differ from the standard issue. Some minor design variations on the back of her hair have been found as shown here from two of the Queen Esther sculptures in my personal collection. No other design or color variations are known to exist. Lady Macbeth, introduced in 1975, became the 16th sculpture in the Portraits in Porcelain collection. Measuring 13 inches in height, she was a limited edition restricted to 750 copies and had an issue price of $850. No known design or color variations have been found to date. This piece, like Portia, should be handled only on the lower half. Damage has been observed where the long braid of her hair running down her back has been snapped off due to improper handling, while other copies have been for sale either missing the gold crown she holds or with the crown detached and fingers broken. In 1976, as we celebrated our bicentennial, Seba selected American First Lady Abigail Adams wife of President John Adams, to be the first of two portraits in porcelain released to commemorate the nation's 200th birthday. As the 17th edition to the collection, Abigail Adams, design number 487, was 10 inches in height, was an edition restricted to 750, and had an issue price of $875. This edition did not sell out, and in 1981, it was reduced to 600 copies. No design variations have been discovered, but one color variation has been found. Abigail was also made in blue, but this may be a unique item as only one copy has been seen in this color to date. Interestingly, the studio did not attempt to create an actual likeness of the First Lady, as actual portraits of Abigail Adams show her with dark hair. 
However, it is clear the studio's portrait in porcelain was far more flattering than the representations in oil. The second bicentennial release in 1976 was Priscilla. As the 18th introduction to the collection, she was 14 inches tall, issued as design number 489, and had a limited edition of 500 copies. Priscilla was priced at $825. There are no known design or color variations. The 20th sculpture introduced in the collection was released in 1978. Good Queen Anne, design number 4001, was 14 inches tall, had an issue price of $975, and an initial declared issue restricted to 750 copies. This is the first sculpture in the Portraits in Porcelain collection to utilize a four-digit design number. The studio had exhausted the 400 series, and to compensate for this, they simply added a digit and began using the 4000 series. Sales were not as strong as originally anticipated and the edition size was later reduced to 550 as shown in the appendix of the 1979 catalog. Later lists would show the edition reduced to 350, but that was obviously a typographical error that managed to carry over several times. Dozens of good Queen Anne sculptures have sold with edition numbers in the 4 and 500 range. The three copies of Good Queen Anne in my personal collection are number 408, 461, and 484. There are no design or color variations known to exist. In 1979, the studio released the 21st edition to the collection with the introduction of Berengaria, number 4015. Measuring 15 inches tall and introduced as an edition of 500 copies, she had a starting price of $1,450. She was a fast seller with the entire edition sold and completed by 1981. The spring 1981 price list showed her edition as complete with a closing price of $1,625. To date, no design or color variations have been found for Berengaria. The 22nd edition, also released in 1979, was the stunning design of Nefertiti, number 4022. She is 12 and a quarter inches tall, had an issue price of $2,100 and an edition limit of 500. No design variations exist for this sculpture, but minor color variations have been noted, primarily in a few of the earliest pieces where her skin tone appeared more Caucasian. This is clearly shown in the marketing material released in 1979. The studio likely changed the color to reflect that of ancient art which depicts Nefertiti with darker skin tones. Both Nefertitis in my collection have the darker orange toned skin. Trouble spots to watch for on this piece are the loops connecting the tassels to the pillows. Numerous copies have been offered for sale with broken loops or with poor restorations. This piece is tricky to handle, but damage will happen if handled carelessly. In 1981, the 23rd release in the collection was introduced with Jane Eyre, number 4047. She was 12 inches tall, had an edition limit of 500, and was introduced with a price of $975. To date, no design or color variations have been noted for this sculpture. The 24th edition, number 4058, was Desdemona. Another issue that rapidly sold out, this stunning sculpture was 14 and one half inches tall and a limited edition of 500 copies. She had an issue price of $1,850. No design or color variations have been found. Unfortunately, a good number of the Desdemona copies sold online or at auction have had damage to the delicate folds of lace in the handkerchief she holds and will often have broken fingers. The summer of 1982 had a special introduction departing from the traditional spring and fall releases. The 25th issue, number 4064, Persephone, in a seated position, was considerably larger than the other seated designs of the past. Measuring 14 and a half inches tall, she was, as the British would say, simply massive. She was limited to 200 copies and had an introductory price of $3,250. There are no known design or color variations. The studio did, however, release her 
with different design numbers into smaller sizes at a later date. This is a piece that will invite damage if not handled with extreme care. Look carefully and closely before you touch. One finger in the wrong spot and your investment is worth 10% of the current market values. Also in 1982, Richard the Lionheart number 4077 was released. He measured 15 inches tall and was in addition restricted to 350. No known design variations have been found, but color variations do exist. This piece also often turns up on the secondary market with damage. The sword is frequently detached, often missing, and broken fingers are not uncommon. The next sculpture in the series is number 4086, Queen Guinevere. Released in 1983, she measures 10 inches tall and was in addition restricted to 500 copies. No design variations have been found, but minor color variations are known to exist. Camille, design number 4087, was released in 1983. As an addition limited to 500 copies, she is 14 and a half inches tall and covered in frou-frou. This piece, while absolutely awesome in craftsmanship, is another sculpture where you absolutely have to think and look before you touch, then look again. Most copies sold online and at auction have been damaged and are either missing her mirror or have it detached. The lace ribbon on her back and at the bottom of her dress will frequently be damaged. There are no known design variations, but color variations have been found. The next release is the first we see in the collection where a design number was issued to a piece that was released out of order. Othello was introduced in 1983 as an addition of 350. His design number is 4091. He was one number ahead of Madame Butterfly. The two were under development at the same time and likely he was finished first, thus his earlier release. He measures 15 inches in height and has no known design variations, though some minor color variations have been noted. This piece will often be found missing one, two, or three of the feathers in his turban. A mint copy will have all three. Design number 4090 was issued to Madame Butterfly. Released the following cycle in 1984, she is 13 and a half inches tall and was issued as an addition of 500 copies. She has no known variations, but is often found with her parasol detached, damaged, or missing. Unfortunately, due to the way the parasol is attached, once it becomes separated, it usually breaks off the red, yellow, and blue combs in her hair next to where the umbrella was set. The fall of 1984 saw Bathsheba, number 4097, released as an addition of 500. She measured 14 and a half inches tall and had an issue price of $1,975. As another biblical character from the Old Testament, we once again can wonder why this piece was not placed in the biblical collection like Moses and Noah were. Bathsheba was introduced in this collection and was never moved. No design variations have been found, but color variations exist in her dress and her hair. Hair color can range from auburn to dark brown to almost black. Also released in 1984 was design number 5001, King Arthur. He measures 14 inches tall and had an addition limited to 350. No design or color variations have been found to date. Very few of the King Arthur sculptures for sale online or at auction have the sword he is holding still attached. The swords have almost always been broken or are missing. Design number 5013, King David, was yet another biblical character assigned to the portraits in porcelain collection upon issue and was never moved. He was 14 and a half inches tall and a limited edition of 350. He had an issue price of $1,475. King David has no known design or color variations. Carmen, number 5024, was released as a limited edition of 500 in 1986. Measuring 14 and 3 quarters inches tall, she had an issue price of $1,675. Upon her release, Carmen had more red color than any other portrait in porcelain had ever had that was produced previously. 
She has no known design or color variations. In 1987, the Queen of Sheba was released as design number 5037. A limited edition of 500, she was 14 and a half inches tall and had an issue price of $2,295. No design variations are known to exist, but variations have been noted in the color of her hair. In 1987, the companion piece was issued to the Queen of Sheba. King Solomon, yet another biblical character, number 5044, was released as an edition of 500. His issue price was $2,695. No design or color variations have been found to date. One known issue exists with this sculpture. The scepter he holds can easily become separated. Several pieces have been for sale online and at auction, missing the golden scepter. Also issued in 1987 was Elaine, Lady of the Lake. Elaine was 13 and a quarter inches tall, a limited edition of 350 copies, and was priced at $2,100. No known design or color variations are known to exist. The final portrait in porcelain in a full-figure standing sculpture issued in the 1980s was that of Scheherazade issued in 1989. As design number 5063, Scheherazade was 13 inches tall, a limited edition of 500, and had an issue price of $2,400. There are no known design variations, but a color variation does exist. The standard issue finds Scheherazade wearing a plain, light purple blouse and skirt. Others have her blouse in a darker purple and skirt decorated with a darker purple floral pattern. The copy in my collection contains the additional decoration as shown. There were at least another dozen pieces sold by the Seba Studio which were a part of the Portraits in Porcelain collection. A series of three busts, Nefertiti, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony, were approximately nine inches tall. The court jester and harlequin were introduced into the Portraits in Porcelain collection and later moved to the Theater of Porcelain collection. Columbine and Puck, while full-figured sculptures, were never in the Portraits in Porcelain collection. The Buccaneer and Sir Henry were two male subjects that were merely artists' conceptions and did not actually portray any specific person or character. Tristan and Isolde, Swan Lakes Odette, and Romeo and Juliet are couples where the two are mounted on the same base. Kuan Yin was introduced in 1971, Puck in 1981 as part of the Theater of Porcelain, and Pagliacci in 1985. There have been a few pieces marked as artist's proofs that have surfaced which were never released such as this guy who is believed to be Beau Brummel. Two copies have been sold at auction in past years. He was never entered into regular production. Perhaps the largest portrait in porcelain piece ever produced was Knight in Shining Armor. This piece was introduced with the declared limited edition of 25, but with a starting price of $27,500, it is likely few ever sold. It measured 21 inches tall, by 18 inches wide. The couple on the horse are unnamed and not of specifically identified people or characters. To date, only one has been seen on the secondary market and it is not known if any design or color variations exist. That pretty well covers the Cebus Portraits in Porcelain collection. If you would like more information about the specific items or Cebus Studio, Visit the Cebus Archive online at cebusarchive.com. The archive contains details about all known Cebus sculptures, the studio, and its history. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informational and entertaining. I invite you to watch the other videos in the series and please subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. I look forward to sharing more with you in the future as we continue to explore Cebus. America's premier porcelain art studio.